Hello everyone, back to you today's first video. You're going to have a look at the weather month ahead with uh, the Japanese CFS V2 models. It's Joe May Friday, as always on a Friday, uh, we're doing the month ahead look ahead. And uh, it may be good Friday, but the updates do continue here at Gaza. So later on, I'm hoping to do uh, snow watch, can you believe? Because there might be some fairly substantial snow coming up this Easter, particularly focused on uh, Easter Monday. But exactly where that snow is going to be, causing a lot of uncertainty at the moment. So uh, have a look, uh, have a look out um, for uh, the chance of seeing snow watch later on today. And updates will continue throughout the East period. Tomorrow we've got weekend forecast coming up for you. Sunday we'll have a gas over Sunday roundup and some very interesting analogues. Bank Holiday Monday, as always, got a historic video coming up. Going to look at um, the uh, spring and summer of 2013. And we're also going to give away this prize. That's what I'm going to start with for JMA Friday uh, today. So, this is what we're giving away this year. We've been running this competition since uh, Sunday. Got a couple more days to go. We're going to finish this competition on uh, Easter Sunday. I'll talk about that in a moment. But to just tell you what the prize is, we've teamed up with UK Weather Instrumentation to give away the Climate Combined Weather Dial. Uh, so this is the fantastic item that we're giving away uh, for this year's competition. It's a uh, outdoor thermometer, barometer and hydrometer all in one uh, fantastic compact and nice looking uh, unit. Um, it retails at thirty nine ninety five. If you wanted to buy this at Metcheck, you have to pay thirty nine ninety five to buy it. But it will be somebody's for free on Sunday. So this is just a prize draw. You don't have to answer any difficult questions. You just email your name and address to Gazwevids at uh, gmail.com. Or I'm on the competitions page at Gazwevids. You simply fill out the uh, feedback form and enter your name and address in the your message box and uh, that's what you have to do you just submit that and it will be sent directly to Gazwell of his uh, email inbox and uh, we will receive uh, that entry you will be placed into the prize draw and then, as I say, on Sunday, somebody is going to win the uh, Climate Combined Weather Dial. Um, now, can you believe we've had 200 entrants so far and counting uh, for this competition? By far and away, the biggest response we've ever had. So I think uh, there's a lot of interest in um, the Weather Dial. And you've still got a couple more days to get your entries in. Now, we're going to close this competition at 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, 5 o'clock Easter Sunday. We're going to have to be quite strict about when we close it this year. Um, it will have to be dead on the dot of 5 o'clock in the afternoon uh, because we've had so many entries this year. It's going to take a long time to get everybody's name uh, put into the bag, essentially. So we're going to have to get everybody into the bag. Take quite a long time for us to do it. Um, so 5 o'clock will be the cutoff, no later than 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon for your uh, entries uh, please and then at seven o'clock there'll be a video appearing on this page and a written uh, post as well in case you can't watch the video um and uh, that will uh, then reveal who has won the uh, web dial you'll see the name in the video being pulled out of the bag at uh, random so that you know it's all uh, fair and square and uh, yes yeah, somebody's going to win this prize in 48 hours time but you've got to be in it to win it so uh Get emailing and good luck to everybody that has entered or everybody that is still to enter our uh, prize draw. And as always, a big, big thank you to metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation for supplying uh, this prize. Finally, all runners up this year um, are not coming away empty handed because uh, anybody that enters the prize draw will be entitled to an exclusive 15% off money back, uh, money off um, code on any Metcheck product uh, for two weeks from Easter Sunday through to the 15th of April. I'll give you your uh, exclusive 15% off Metcheck code when I do the winner's video and uh, return 
post uh, here on the competitions page uh, on Sunday evening. So you will have to just make a little note of um, your exclusive uh, discount code and then any product that you might want to buy at MetCheck for two weeks from Easter Sunday, you'll be able to use that 15% off discount code. So good luck to everybody for entering. Let's get on with JMA Friday. We're going to begin by having a look at the Japanese uh, 500 middle bar height anomalies broken down into weekly pairs. Then we'll have a look at CFS V2 and see how the two models are comparing. So starting off with a uh, JMA North Pole view down 500 mm of our height tonight. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere just here. Remember, middle latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere around uh, there. Uh, blue extrapolates to low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolates to high pressure. Um, these are breakdowns week period. So the first week period will take us from today, the 30th of March through to the 6th of April. And it looks really unsettled in the week ahead with a deep area of below average heights stretched out from uh, America, northern east parts of America, across the Atlantic and through the UK and into Europe as well. The jet stream is down here. So we're rather on the cold side of the jet. It looks cold and unsettled in the week ahead with low pressure dominating. We're on the cold side of the jet stream, more or less. So there is wintry potential in with bear. As I say, look out for snow watch later on today when we'll try to narrow down where the prospects of some snow could be on bank holiday Monday. Then we go through to uh, week two, which takes us from the 6th through to the 13th of April. A little bit of a change here. We've got below average heights through the central part of the Atlantic, but we are raising the heights to the east and to the southeast of, uh, of the country. So the jet stream and the flow will be doing something rather like that. That could be spring emerging as we go through into the second week of April. We've been talking about this in the videos quite a bit just lately. Uh, that the second week of April pr uh, possibly is focusing on the chance of bringing up some spring-like weather. So the JMA is just about going for that. Uh, probably nothing to get overly excited about, but it does look as though that could be a lot better there from the 6th through to the 13th of April. And then we go through to week 3 and 4, which takes us from the 13th to the 27th of April. And uh, I'm afraid that little burst of spring, or oh, little hints of spring, doesn't last very long. We uh, return to above average heights around Greenland and Iceland, below average heights are through Scandinavia and central parts of Europe. Uh, so the flow would be doing something uh, rather like that. It looks pretty cool, that I have to say. The uh, wind direction will probably be coming down from the north or the northeast. And um, I suspect, uh, again, we see the delayed spring uh, continuing. Now, bear in mind that these are two weekly anomalies, so it's possible we might, for example, see spring like conditions in week three, and then week four, which would be the end of April, goes into something a lot colder and more unsettled, or possibly. We do it the other way around. So you always have to keep that in mind with a two-weekly anomaly that we might be um, a little bit different from uh, sort of uh, week one of that two-weekly anomaly to week two of the two-weekly anomaly. You see what I mean? Um, so it's a little, a little bit more complicated when you have a two-weekly uh, anomaly. But overall, that does look like a pretty cool second half to uh, April. Let's have a look at the tropical and mid-latitude view in terms of temperatures and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights from the JMA model. So the British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. This is the equator of the Earth just there. We've got the southern hemisphere of the equator of the Earth uh, on the southern side of the equator. The northern hemisphere of the Earth is on the uh, northern side of the equator. You can't see the poles, but the North Pole uh, is just here. And perhaps most importantly for this particular update, the British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. America is over here with Canada. We've got Europe around here, Russia, 
is over there. Asia is uh, down there. So, everybody knows where everybody is. Let's get on. And we can see that the uh, height anomaly for week one, which again is the 30th of March to the 6th of April, does look very, very unsettled. Deep area of below average heights through the Atlantic into the UK and going into Europe too. We're on the cool side of the jet stream. The jet is down there. So, cool and unsettled uh, for the week ahead. What about temperature anomalies? They're coming out colder than average, below average temperature anomalies forecast by the JMA for the week ahead. What about, what about precipitation? That's a little bit above average. So a pretty grim old uh, week ahead with the JMA. Um, we're looking at cooler than average temperatures, above average precipitation, and a very unsettled 500 millibar height anomaly to go with it. This is how the heights are looking for uh, week two. This is going from the 6th to the 13th of April. This one shows uh, the below average heights being pushed back into the central Atlantic. I and mean, if we come over here, we're raising the heights to some degree anyway across central parts of Europe, which you will think starts to lift the jet stream back northward. So maybe hints of spring there for the 6th to the 13th of April. What about the temperature anomaly? Well, it still is quite disappointing, actually. So uh, below average for the north, perhaps closer to or maybe even a little bit above average down in the south across England and Wales. But generally, those um, temperature anomalies are coming out still rather on the cool side, I have to say. And precipitation still is coming out a little bit wetter than average. So I thought the heights looked like an improvement. Um, but overall, this is still a pretty grim week, actually, from the 6th to the 13th of April when you dig down into the detail. Temperature uh, Temperatures are still more or less below average. Precipitation is still more or less above average. And then we go through to uh, week three and four, takes us from the 13th to the 27th of April. Now, we can't see Greenland and Iceland on this view, but we know we've got a ridge somewhere around there. And then we've got the trough appearing down here, which you will think is going to push down the air from a north or possibly northeasterly direction. So temperature anomalies, they're coming out colder than average. This does look like another cooler than average month if the uh, JMA is right so uh, this will be the third cooler than average month on the trot if this comes off for april with uh, temperatures below average precipitation is an improvement there we're going more towards the uh, drier than average side that is happening as uh, we are sending the trough over to the east and southeast of the country so a little bit drier but still very cool temperatures there from the 13th to the 27th of April. What about the CFS V2 then? So these again, 500 millibar heights, broken down into weekly pairs. The first weekly pair taking us from the 30th of March through to the 5th of April. We look very unsettled in the week ahead with a deep area of below average heights over the UK and into the Atlantic and going into Europe as well. There's a bit of a blocking signal up around Greenland. That's never a very good uh, sign and the jet stream is down there. So, good agreement between the JMA and the CFS V2 for the week ahead. It's looking unsettled and it's looking quite cold as well. We go through to uh, week three. This takes us, week two I should say, this takes us from the 6th through to the 12th of April with below average heights uh, becoming more centred to the west of the UK. Heights are rising across eastern parts of Europe and down across the Azores. So we're doing something a bit like that, the flow with the jet stream. It looks still as though it's uh, unsettled, probably a bit less cold though than we have it in uh, week in week uh, one, and still no real hints of spring. However, look at this. We go through to week three. This is the 13th to the 19th of April, and we're raising the heights over and just to the east of the country. At the same time, this trough of low pressure is becoming centred and pushed back into the middle of the Atlantic. And so the upshot there is that we begin to do something like that with the flow of the jet stream. It looks much drier, but perhaps more well, not necessarily more importantly, but it, it does look also as though it would be quite a bit warmer as well because the air would start to push up from uh, central and southern parts of Europe in that kind 
of situation and then this continues to week four this is the 20th through to the 26th of april and we have the above average height centered just to our east across, let's say, uh, Denmark. Below average heights are out in the central Atlantic. And again, we would do something like that with the flow, with the jet. It looks pretty dry and it would also be relatively warm as well, or certainly very mild, spring-like, as we bring the air up from a southerly to southeast direction. So after a cold and wet first half to April or first week to 10 days of April, spring uh, begins to spring into life there as we go through to the middle and second half of April. So these are the temperature anomalies look with CFSV2 the week ahead, the 30th of March to the 5th of April is coming out colder than average for the UK and for much of Europe as well. Temperatures remain depressed. As we go through to uh, week two, this is the 6th to the 12th of April. Again, temperatures overall cold and average. Not as cold compared to week one. Nevertheless, temperatures still below average for uh, week two. But week three starts to hint at a change. This is, but this is as that ridge builds just to our east. Temperature anomalies then are going back to normal or maybe even hinting at being just a little bit above average for the UK and substantially above average for much of uh, Europe. This is the 13th to the 19th of April. Spring is uh, setting itself up. And then we go through to week four, the 20th to 26th of April, seeing temperature anomalies still a little bit above average. Nothing to get overly excited about at this stage from a temperature anomaly perspective, but it's, it's still a little bit uh, warmer than average as it is through most parts of uh, Europe. Definite signs of spring emerging from the middle of April. Precipitation on the CFSV2 finally, but week ahead is coming out wetter than average. So both models are in agreement that the coming week is a bit of a write-off, colder and wetter than average coincided with Easter, really not what we want at all. This is how uh, week two precipitation anomalies are coming out. Again, above average from the 6th to the 12th of April. So put that down, the first week to 10 days, put it down as a cold, uh, colder and wetter than average. But week three goes to average precipitation and maybe even hints at being a little bit on the drier than average side. And then week four, as ever with these precipitation anomalies in weeks three and four, with the CFSV2, we are losing the signal, but um, we're close to average. And I suspect, again, this would be a drier period, I think, from this middle part of April into the second half of month. It would be drier. And importantly, for anybody that wants to get on with um, some growing, it would be a little bit warmer as well. So, a bit of disagreement between the two models. The uh, JMA, they're both in agreement that the coming week is a write-off, so that's the first thing to get out of the way. Um, a write-off for the week ahead is going to be colder and wetter than average. There is wintry potential in there as well. They start to diverge from week two. JMA hints at being a little bit more spring-like in the second week. The CFS is just very unsettled in the second week. And then they really split apart uh, as we go through to weeks three and four, which takes us from the middle of April into the second half of the month. Um, the JMA wants to take us back into pretty cold and, um, well, not necessarily unsettled conditions, but certainly quite uh, cool to cold conditions for the second half of April. The CFS, however, is indicating spring will set itself up and uh, it looks a lot drier and a lot warmer, I think, in the second half of April with the CFS V2. And we'll just have to wait and see which model comes out uh, on top. So, uh, remember, this is just a snapshot. The models could look very different when we do JMA Friday again next week. Um, but if anybody is hoping for a bit of spring, I think the CFS is the one to root for most definitely. That is hinting that spring should arrive from around, uh, well, sometime through the second week of April and then running on into the second half of the month. We shall wait and see. 
Later on today, we're going to have snow what? So we're, we may be almost at the end of March and uh, arrived at Easter, but uh, it doesn't mean it can't snow. And there will be snow around on Bank Holiday Monday. So we'll have a look at that uh, in today's video coming up later on today. Tomorrow, we've got weekend forecast. Sunday, we've got some very, very interesting analogues for the summer, um, as well as a gas Gazmobis Sunny Roundup. And we'll be giving away the prize. And then on Bank Holiday Monday, we've got the historic video looking at the spring and summer of 2013 uh keep checking back for all of the updates enjoy the rest of your good friday thanks so much for tuning in on your good friday uh and just keep checking back for all of the updates during the easter weekend right that's all for now thanks for watching